Hello and welcome to another edition of Professor Speaks. Today we're going to be talking about travel health with our special guest, Dr. Mark Wahlberg. But before we get into that, I'd like to remind you to hit like, subscribe, and hit the little bell for notifications. Hello and welcome to another edition of Professor Speaks. My name is Alex Hernandez. Alongside me as always is Dr. Craig Stern. And our special guest decided to come in for another episode, Dr. Mark Wahlberg from the University of Pacific. So, our topic today is travel health. And what we mean by this is the health while you travel, right? <laughs> how do you prevent? How do you prevent? We, because in, it's, no, uh, it's no mystery. We are a developed country in here in the United States. And um, there are some undeveloped, or is that right? Is that how you say it? Undeveloped? Developing. Underdeveloped? Developing. 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 All right, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's right. Politically correct. I'm sorry. So, uh, developing countries around the world that have not had the type of vaccines or the type of preventative care that we have here in this country. And uh, Dr. Stern, you want to share a couple words? Well, about no, that? I just want to make sure. Um, we talked uh, in the last one, we talked about influenza, a, a virus, obviously, that is very common. But we thought it was important to talk about travel vaccines because today people can get on airplanes that within five, 10 hours can be all over the world versus um, what it used to be where you'd have to uh, take a very long trip in order to go somewhere. What that does is it makes um, uh, illness travel very quickly. It means it spreads very quickly. And so we brought our expert in in order to talk about that. So um, as we asked the expert, what are some of the most uh, common health issues that travelers may encounter? So most travelers mm -hmm. are going to be fine. And that's the reality of travel. That's why everyone still travels. Uh, in general, if we're talking about more infectious diseases, typically uh, it's going to be gastrointestinal or GI disorders. So you might get traveler's diarrhea is what we designated, uh, where you just have loose stools, diarrhea for a couple of days. Generally speaking, this is not anything you need to treat. You don't need antibiotics for this. Uh, it's just increasing fluids. And, you know, sometimes people need some of the salt or a Gatorade substitute to come back in and help out. Uh, but there are some things they can do to prevent this common illness. Okay. Uh, the first is there are a couple vaccines available that will reduce uh, the risk of getting these pathogens, such as hepatitis A vaccine, which is recommended for everyone here in the U.S. as well, because we still have hepatitis A here. There's actually outbreaks uh, all across California and in other parts of the country right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also typhoid, which is a relative of salmon salmonella that we see here as an outbreak as well. Uh, that There's two different vaccines available for that. One's an injection, one are just some oral tablets you take. Um, hepatitis A, there's no real anything we can take once you have it. You just have to write it out. Uh, you may be hospitalized for it. Uh, typhoid, there are antibiotics, but it can be a very deadly disease if it's not diagnosed early. Uh, and also cholera, another bacterial disease. Uh, there is a new vaccine available for it, uh, but we typically don't see that as much in travelers. Now, I've mentioned three vaccines essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole lot of other things out there that can make us sick. Right. And so you still have to do preventative measures to make sure you're not getting other viral or bacterial pathogens or even parasitic infections from the food and water that you drink. So making sure you have a plan for water, which personally I don't think should include drinking a whole bunch of plastic bottles and discarding them in that country. So bringing water purifiers or UV filters or a lot of other things that are available. Or they make those water bottles with the filter With the built filter in. built in. Yeah. yeah, just make sure that it's going to filter out everything that you're going to encounter there. <laughs> Uh, not just Cross make your water fingers. taste a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> but also, you know, the, the general rule is you either cook it, you peel it, you boil it, or you forget about it and you don't eat it. Okay. Um, and obviously that doesn't fit with everybody's itinerary where they want to go out and eat street food or eat local cuisine that might not meet that. So just be aware there might be some increased risk with those foods. And that's where if you do get something like traveler's diarrhea, there are some agents that will help slow your bowel down. Um, only in extreme cases do we recommend the use of an antibiotic. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's talking about street food, I mean, I love, like, Vietnamese street food is very good. Is there stuff that'll help, I don't know, avoid some of those uh, gastrointestinal problems? <laughs> in general, no. 
Uh, your vaccines will they help prevent cook it. it. They cook it right in front of you. Again, <laughs> if, it's, if it's cooked and it wasn't previously contaminated or if it was contaminated and it was cooked enough mm. to where any pathogen in there would have been killed, right. might be okay. Again, if it's cooked and it's steaming, it should be okay. okay. If it's been sitting out a while... And in some cases, there's a lot of other pests that come around, such as flies, that might be transmitting things to cook food. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why I rarely eat at buffets, even in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> when there's more chance for other vectors to come in, it might not work. Okay, uh, order well done when you go home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. One thing, Tad, patients have asked me, they go to a particular area, they're on an airplane, somebody may be sick or coughing mm -hmm. or whatever. And because it's viral, it's respiratory. Mm -hmm. And the question then is, uh, do they have to be worried? What should they do? Sure. How do they handle that? It certainly happened before when there was bird flu and all of that going Absolutely. on in Asia. The question is how to handle that. What's your thought? So, you know, the reality is the air on an airplane is probably the cleanest air that we breathe. It's just a little drier, and so it irritates our sinuses a little bit. But in terms of the purification of the air on the plane... Unless there's somebody right next to you or maybe one seat front and back of you, I'm least worried about that. Now, can you pick stuff off, off of your tray and off of your other thing? Yes. So this is where frequent hand washing, or even this is one of the few times I'll let my kids use alcohol sanitizers on their hands. Uh, the airport itself, however, <laughs> is much less conducive to purifying the air. Uh, you know, especially I think of lining up to get on a plane and you have somebody, you know, everybody jockeying for their position and somebody sneezes right at you. Uh, that's more of the issue. Um, and, you know, if we're talking about GI issues, using the bathrooms that who knows how many other travelers have used. To me, I'm more worried about the actual airport than I am the airplane most of the time. And keep in mind, if you're taking preventative measures like getting vaccinated and so for several different illnesses, you'll probably be fine, okay? You don't need to become a germaphobe after this, okay? This is just preventative. <laughs> just wanted to remind everybody, because I felt myself getting a little sick at the moment while you were talking about it. <laughs> um, anyways, moving on. You mentioned vaccines. We mentioned vaccines. We talk about vaccines on this show quite a bit. And so are, are there other vaccines people will need to consider besides the GI bugs you mentioned? Sure. Um, first and foremost, when you're traveling... I think in the U.S. and a lot of developed countries, we take for granted how rare some of these diseases are. So mm -hmm. things like measles, uh, chicken pox, right. uh, even polio, which has been completely eradicated from the Western Hemisphere. There are still some pockets of it all over. Uh, as we're talking right now, there was just an outbreak of measles in uh, New York. There's right. an outbreak of varicella in North Carolina. And these are generally associated with pockets of people that have been under-vaccinated, so they lose that herd immunity that's required to suppress these diseases. Well, when you travel to other countries that maybe don't have these in their routine schedule, right. the risk of getting these routine vaccine-preventable diseases mm -hmm. increases. So definitely make sure you have your routine vaccines up to snuff before you travel. Now, the next step would be some of these more tropical diseases that we don't vaccinate for regularly here in the U.S. So things are, these are things like yellow fever, which is common in the Amazon and also in West Africa, and sometimes other parts of Africa. Things like Japanese encephalitis, which is similar to West Nile that we have here, mm -hmm. but this is generally only found in Southeast Asia. Um, both of these are mosquito-borne diseases as well, and so... We can't always prevent every mosquito bite as much as we try, uh, so getting these vaccines will prevent these potentially deadly diseases. Is there a, you know, people have also asked me about, is there a battery or uh, one set, a group of uh, vaccinations that should be my go-to, I need to get these Yeah, all like the a time. traveler's kit of vaccines. Yeah. Sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank so you. so our, our first thing is always looking at your routine vaccines, which mm -hmm. if you're a generally healthy adult or even a senior who's now traveling uh, and you're not in healthcare or some profession that requires you to stay up to date, mm -hmm. most travelers are under vaccinated with their routine vaccine. So the first thing right. we're going to do, typically it's hepatitis A. Sometimes we'll get your tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis vaccine. Some people call this Tdap 
is the abbreviation, or their pertussis vaccine. We'll update you on those. Um, and then it really depends on where you're going. So that's our general, those are our two that we typically see. If you're going to the tropics, influenza actually is year round in the tropics. Mm -hmm. So we always recommend a flu vaccine. And then there's destination specific. So it might be meningococcal vaccine if you're going to certain areas or if you're gonna be staying in close quarters with other people. Uh, like we said, the yellow fever, the Japanese encephalitis. Right. Rabies. While it's an expensive vaccine, it can be a life-saving vaccine. And so you really need a healthcare practitioner who's well-versed uh, in geography as well as vaccine recommendations to give you the pro-con of all of these. Because what we don't want to do as tribal health practitioners is make your preventative medicine more expensive than your trip itself. Right. Uh, but we want to give you an honest, what are your risks uh, versus the cost of these vaccines. So let's say I'm going to Ecuador next year or sure. something like that. Um, You're going to go to Ecuador. i, I got to see the Galapagos Islands. It's on my bucket <laughs> list. Anyways, if I were to go somewhere like that, and then there's exotic animals there as well. Sure. So say, say we're going to South America. Well, what type of things would you want to... Type of vaccines. Sorry, I didn't mean to say things. Vaccines. What type of vaccines should I be looking at for those? So in general, again, we're going to catch you up on routine. Okay. Uh, if you're going to Ecuador, or really anywhere there in South America, it would be a shame to not see the Amazon. So okay. now we need to add on yellow fever vaccine. Let me write that. Uh, because a single time going in there, <laughs> there's been case reports of people that have lived in Peru, say, and they go in for one day into the Amazon, and they come back, they have yellow fever, and they die from it. Yes. So this is an or death situation we're looking at. All right. I'm and right again, it would be our GI things. It would be hepatitis A, typhoid. Uh, would be the things that we would want to prevent. But we're still going to recommend that you're not getting mosquito bites. So mm -hmm. you're using permethrin on your clothes before you go. Uh, you're using DEET if you have any exposed skin, those types of things. Uh, you're avoiding peak hours if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there might be the question of, well, are you going into an area that has malaria? So now we're stepping away from the vaccine side, and we're actually going to a medication that you'll be taking throughout your whole trip and after you get back to make sure that you're not gonna get clinical disease from malaria. So I'll wear a bee beekeeper's outfit for my trip. Okay, I got it. It would be fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so um, what about, all right, anything else? Because you, you already mentioned malaria. We, we talked about mosquitoes, we talked about the tropics, we talked about sure. anything else that a traveler, say someone who wants to go around the world, wants to see things, see, go down to Australia where I hear everything wants to kill you. Pretty much. Um, what, 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 what else should we be prepared for? So, one is to just be fit as a traveler. Okay. Uh, you don't want to go off on an adventure and not be healthy to start with. Right. Uh, the two main things statistically that w you will die from overseas or when traveling mm -hmm. are typically motor vehicle accidents. So make sure you're wearing your seatbelt and you're actually... Uh, transporting or wherever you're going, you're using appropriate transportation. Um, you know, you're not in an overpacked bus with no safety features. Uh, you're, you're not in a car a motorcycle. without safety. <laughs> I wouldn't rent a motorcycle, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't even do that in the U.S. And right. There's probably other people, not your own skill, in a motorcycle. Uh, but then also the second thing is pre-existing conditions. So typically cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to have a heart attack in a country that doesn't have operating hospitals or doesn't have the ability to give you the proper evidence-based medicine that we would have here in the U.S. Or your history. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And making sure that you have your medications with you. If you're planning to travel for a couple of weeks, do you have enough medicine to get you through that entire time? And what if you lose it? What's your plan? Um, there's other things you know that might come up. You know, if you're going to go up a mountain or you're going to be at high altitude, which in sometimes you know you might fly into high altitude, like in the Andes. Right. So there might be the discussion of what to do to prevent altitude sickness or acute mountain sickness. And mm -hmm. so this might be behavioral things. It might be adjusting an itinerary. It might be taking medication in some people who need it. Mm -hmm. um, but again. It's all about prevention and about knowing where you're going and having a good idea of what to expect. Right. Now, really, you can just go on your own to the Centers for Disease Control website, cdc.gov, and you can just search for traveler's health. Mm -hmm. And it will give you a whole litany of things that you need to be watching out for, things you need to do. 
And I would highly recommend using somebody who is trained in travel medicine, who's certified in travel health mm -hmm. or travel medicine to actually help you navigate that. Mark, um, where do people go to find such individuals? Um, Online is a great resource. I would just search out travel clinic. Many times you can get this information from community pharmacies may offer it. Uh, there may be uh, physicians that as a subspecialty have training in this or can provide advice on travel health. Right. Um, sometimes primary care providers are able to do this, but there are a lot of studies out there that say they might not recommend or prescribe the right things for this particular itinerary. Uh, so I always recommend people that have additional certifications. Uh, there's the International Society of Travel Medicine that actually has their own certificate program where it's a competency-based program. Uh, there's also some physicians that are a little bit harder to find that might be accredited through the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, and they will also have a C-TropMed designation. Uh, and again, that's they have to have a certain amount of training and right. pass a competency exam. It's about equivalent to a board certification at that point. Um, they would be the, the people that I would reach out to. Right. Um, really, if you're a complicated case, if you're a healthy adult, um, you're not going anywhere too exotic or doing anything too off the beaten path. Uh, many times the training that people get just from the American Pharmacists Association as pharmacists mm -hmm. um, is sufficient to help them navigate what they need to do. Right, so if you need more information, there are those out there but from what Dr. Mark Wahlberg is saying, that there are people that are certified in, in knowing what you need and what preventative measures you need to take in order to travel to certain locations around the world. So um, that's helpful. And that's, I hope I need to, I'm, I'm going to have to go to Google next after this and uh, see what Ecuador has. <laughs> go to the CDC first. <laughs> CDC.gov is where I'd go first before you just throw it into a search engine. <laughs> Dr. Stern, anything you'd like to add? No, you know, um, uh, traveling tends to be kind of focal. Uh, one year, everybody wants to go see Machu Picchu. Another year, they want to go and see the Amazon. Other years, they may want to go to Africa or maybe to Asia or otherwise. And so, clearly, um, I think the most important things for us is to identify, go to the CDC sites. They have information for it. Um, search out on Google to find the right people to give you the appropriate administration of, of uh, vaccines or drugs. And third, most importantly of all, is don't just wander into it without having thought about it, without having uh, taken some precaution. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Anything else we should add to that? You know, most of this is about prevention and also preparedness. So do what you can to prevent everything, but also be prepared when things don't go right. Um, I always tell people, have a contingency when you're traveling. Right, right. As with anything. I mean, more than just your health, have a contingency with your money, too. That's it. Very expensive out there. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'd like to remind you to go to ProPharmaConsultants.com. Em didn't like that one. <laughs> go to ProPharmaConsultants.com. Um, you'll find many articles written by Dr. Stern himself. Hopefully, he'll write another article about travel health that'll help me as well. And... Uh, <laughs> I'd like to remind you to hit like, subscribe, and hit the little bell for notifications.